Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. This is my full and complete setup guide which is going to show you the best steps and settings for getting a CMU emulator set up for the best possible performance on your PC. This video is going to cover all of the latest updates to CMU including their new multi-core recompilers, their new graphics menus and I'm also going to show you how to set up and use the brand new graphics pack systems which were implemented in the past few CMU versions. This guide is also going to cover the brand new FPS++ and draw distance mods for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There's a hell of a lot to cover so let's jump straight across to my desktop and get things started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is come to your browser. You're going to first of all open this cmu.info link. It is from here you're going to get all of the latest cmu builds. Simply scroll down the page and click this button here. We're going to be saving this to my desktop. Once you've done that, you now want to come to the cmu hook page. Don't worry if the version number doesn't match, the latest version will work with the latest cmu. All you want to do is click right here, then again save this to your desktop. Once you've done that and in the event that you're using a DualShock 4, DualShock 5, Pro Controller for the Switch or Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, you're going to be downloading DS4 Windows, specifically the Ryochen 7 version. Click this download now button to make sure you download the latest version and follow instructions to install. We're going to be using this application to enable motion controls and in emulator controller mapping a little bit later on. You can see here that I already have a DS4 Windows installed. When I run it, it's going to connect my DualSense controller to my PC we're going to be using this software a little bit later down the line if you use any of those supported controllers. For now, we're going to be right clicking on our CMU zip file, right click it and using 7-zip, select extract to a folder of its own, then drag this to center window. Open this folder, then drag and drop the CMU hook zip file here. Again, right click and using 7-zip, select extract here. This is going to give you these two DLL files. These are required for using CMU hook. Next, you can delete the zip file for CMU hook and CMU since we're done with them. And next, you want to right click on cmu.exe, select properties, then come to compatibility tab. Once here, you want to make sure to disable full screen optimizations, run this program as administrator, and coming to change high DPI settings, you want to click this box here, this box here, and make sure to scale by application. Click OK, then click apply to apply those settings, click OK again, and you're now done with CMU compatibility settings. We can now launch the emulator for the first time. Upon launching CMU, you're going to get met with this getting started section. What you want to do is set up a custom MLC path into which you're going to be storing your game updates, DLCs and game saves. I already have one created and if you already have a custom MLC folder, you're going to be selecting it. All you want to do is create a folder called CMU Emulator Backup. Then again, by creating a new folder, you want to create this MLC01 folder. Highlight it like so, then click Select Folder. Once you have that done, you're going to be setting up your game paths. This is the folder that contains your ROMs or game files for your Nintendo Wii U games. I have mine right here in this Wii U games folder. You can see here is my Breath of the Wild game file. My game is sorted into code, content and meta folders. You do not want to select the individual game. Instead, you want to select the folder which contains all of your games. Simply highlight it like before, select OK. We're now done with setting up our custom MLC, game path and in a little while we're going to be setting up our graphics packs. Click next and we're not going to be setting up input just yet. You do want to select automatically check for updates. This will always make sure CMU is kept up to date on your computer. Click close. We're now done with the initial setup. In just a moment I'm going to show you how you can add updates and DLCs to any of your games but for now you want to click download now to make sure that you get the shared fonts. These fonts are required for font rendering in such games like Smash Bros 4. Once you have those downloaded, we can proceed. As I said previous, you are going to need the latest updates for games like Breath of the Wild. To install them, you want to click File, Install Game Update or DLC, and then navigate to wherever on your computer your game's update files are stored. Mine are here in this Updates folder. You can say I have my update and my DLC. To install it, simply come into this folder, come into your meta folder and select meta.xml. Click open and this should begin the installation procedure. Since I already have this installed, I'm not going to install it again. The process for installing a DLC is the exact same. Again, you come back to file, install game title, update or DLC, come back to your DLC folder, again find your meta folder, select your meta file, click open and it's going to install. Again, since I already have this installed, I'm not going to do so again. For all of the latest graphics packs for Breath of the Wild, it is tremendously important that you install version 2.0.8 or these graphics packs and mods are simply not going to work. 
The next thing we're going to be doing is covering our debug settings. Come to the debug tab, select use simuhawk h.264, then you want to make sure that you're using the system default for mm timer and custom timer. If you have these set to anything else, please make sure to set them to default. Next up, we're going to be coming to our options tab and we're going to be setting up our graphics packs. These graphics packs have got one of the biggest overhauls as of late, you may have seen it in some of my videos. What you want to do is click the download latest community graphics pack button. This is going to download, extract and install these graphics packs for use on CMU. Once they have correctly extracted and installed, you're going to see your games appear like so. As long as you have this install games tick box ticked, it's only going to show the games you currently have installed, though you can untick it to show all of the graphics packs which are currently available. For The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, this game has some of the most complicated graphics packs, so let's go over how to use these. To activate a graphics pack, click the little tick box to the left of it. For this graphics section, you see we have aspect ratio, we're going to leave this at 16x9. We have resolution, which you can swap from 720p to 1080p, 1440p or even 4K resolution. Please note that the higher the resolution, the lower your performance is going to be, especially so if you don't have a very, very powerful GPU. For now, we're just going to leave this at 1920 by 1080p. For anti-aliasing, I would advise leaving this at normal, and again for shadows, if you have a very powerful GPU, you should change this to high or 200%. I would not advise setting this to ultra or extreme, since the game does not look that much better at these higher presets, but the performance is definitely lower. For now, we're going to leave this at medium and move on to enhancements. From here, you have clarity, depth of field, reflections, and anisotropic filtering. For our clarity preset, the one I've been really liking recently is the Surfrost Dim Display version, though if you have a very, very bright monitor, I will advise using only the Surfrost recommended preset. For depth of field, we're going to leave this at enabled. Reflections, I personally leave at normal, though you can set them to enhanced. Please be aware that this will lower your performance. We're going to leave this at normal for now, and for anisotropic filtering, you can change this to extreme of 16x, however, personally, again, I prefer the default of 8x. Moving along, we're going to take a look at some workarounds. This section is pretty self-explanatory. Depending on which API, be it Vulkan or OpenGL, you simply turn on the graphics packs specific to your own GPU. For example, if it says Vulkan or OpenGL and you're using that API, just turn on that graphics pack. There are also a few workarounds for specific GPU issues, like you can see at the bottom here, shadow fixes for Intel GPUs on Vulkan. There are also some OpenGL workarounds, for example if you're using an AMD or Intel GPU you use these graphics packs here, or if you're using an NVIDIA GPU on OpenGL you want to turn on these two here. TLDR, just use common sense and enable the graphics packs specific to your rendering API and your GPU. Moving on to the mods section, this is where things get very interesting. First of all, you want to turn on FPS++ and also enable extended memory. FPS++ has got a serious upgrade as of late. You want to set this from normal to advanced settings. For frame rate limit here, you can see we have a default of 60. However, you can change it in settings. If you want to benchmark and do some testing of performance, you can set no frame rate limit. However, I would advise setting this to 60. This menu cursor fix is generally only useful if your frame rate goes over 72 FPS and only comes into play if you're using a frame rate limit of over 72. So please just leave this enabled at 72 and that's basically all you have to do. Static mode should be left disabled, frame average should be left at 8 and fence type should be left at performance fence. Moving on to some of the cool optimizations we've gotten recently. This extended memory graphics pack allows CMU to use more emulated memory than it normally would. This allows us to use certain modifications like this draw distance mod. This new modification allows you to change draw distance for things like enemies, NPCs, trees, bushes, foliage and several other things and as you can see here we have several different presets. Please be aware of the fact that by boosting the draw distance of any of these objects you are and can significantly reduce your performance in game so if you are suffering with much lower performance than normal please set these back to their defaults of medium. I would also highly advise just leaving texture distance detail at normal since you can make your textures look really bad and shimmery by changing this option. Moving on to our cheat section and away from mods, these again are pretty self-explanatory. The only one that really needs explanation is this durability mod right here. This durability modification allows you to change the rate at which your weapons degrade in gameplay. You can also set your weapons to unbreakable, however if you do not wish to use any of these mods simply disable them with the little tick box on the left. 
As before, just enable whichever ones you wish to use in gameplay. In relation to graphics packs, that's pretty much it. That's how you activate or deactivate graphics packs, it's basically identical for every other game on this emulator. Moving swiftly along, let's come to Options, General Settings. In this general area, there's pretty much nothing we need to change. If you wish to do so, you can change the UI language from this language drop down here. I'm going to leave this at default and move on to our graphics section. In this area, we're going to be changing our graphics API from OpenGL to Vulkan. If it doesn't auto-select it, select your graphics device from the drop down list, leave pre-compiled shaders at auto, and then you're also going to be enabling async shader compile. This setting on the Vulkan API greatly reduces the time it takes to build a shader cache, so please make sure to have this setting enabled. If you encounter any screen tearing in gameplay, you should enable double or triple buffering. Since I don't get screen tearing, I'm leaving this at off. Upscale and downscale filter should be set to bilinear, full screen scaling set to keep aspect ratio. Let's move along and take a look at audio. You want to swap this from direct sound to X Audio 2. Set this as your primary sound driver, then switch the channels to stereo. I would also advise turning this up if you do not think your volume is loud enough. If you want to turn it down, do so, but I generally leave mine at 100. For gamepad audio, again select primary sound driver, this can only be set to stereo, and again make sure to turn this device up. Turn it down if any of your gamepad audio devices are too loud. Moving on again, we're going to take a look at overlays. I'm going to enable an FPS and CPU usage overlay, then in this position drop down menu I'm going to select the top right corner. You can see that by default this notification overlay is already enabled in the top left hand corner, this is going to show you when shaders are compiling. I would also advise setting these to a higher number like 125 or 150 for better visibility. Moving on to our account settings, this again is all fairly basic. You can create a separate account that uses separate saves and save file directories. If you do not wish to do so, you can simply ignore. Please make sure that you have all of the same settings I have applied, then click the X button. As with most emulators, you're going to need to actually set up your input mapping and your controllers. I'm going to now show you how you can set this up, including things like motion controls using a motion input from a pad. Now, as I said earlier, in order to use motion controls, you're going to need something like a DualShock 4, a DualSense, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, or Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. If you're using any of those controllers, you can easily map them by using a DS4 Windows, the application which I previously linked in the video. As you can see here, I have my UDP server enabled. This is the motion telemetry server which allows you to use motion controls. And as you can see, my DualSense controller is indeed connected. Once connected, for my emulated controller, I'm going to select a Wii U gamepad. For controller API, I'm going to select X input, then I'm going to select controller 1. Once detected and selected, you then need to individually map each of the buttons on your controller. In relation to the blow mic or show screen button, for blow mic I generally map this to the F key on my keyboard and I leave the show screen button unmapped. Additional settings can be found in this drop down window here, these are for rumble and button threshold. However, I would advise setting a low rumble value if you want to preserve the battery life of your controller. I'd also just leave button threshold at 50%. Now in the event that your thumbsticks have any kind of drift at all, you can alleviate this drifting problem by adjusting a dead zone. Though to be honest, I would leave both of these dead zones at 25%. Once you have your controller set up, you need to assign it a profile name at the top here, then click save. This will allow you to load this profile at any time in future. Now be aware, for couch co-op games, you're going to need to set the first controller to Wii U gamepad, then any additional controllers to the Wii U Pro controller. That's just how it works on the Nintendo Wii U, so that's how it's going to work on CMU. Once you're happy with any and all of your controller mapping, click the X button, we are now done. Next, we're going to set up a motion input. If you do not have this gamepad motion source option, please make sure you've installed CMUOC as shown earlier in the guide. You want to select DSU1 and you want to select it by slot. Please be aware that this motion control option is only going to be available if you're using a DS4 Windows. You do not have the ability to use motion controls on any Microsoft Xbox controllers. Motion controls and a gyroscope is only available on controllers like the DS3, DS4, DualSense and the Switch native controllers. Now that we've set up input, motion, set up our general settings, our graphics pack settings, I'm going to show you how you can set up some game specific settings. By right clicking you can see you get access to start, favorite, Edit name, you can open the game's wiki page, open your game directory, your save directory, update directory, DLC directory, and right here you can see you can edit your game's graphics packs which we've already done, and you can edit your game profile. You want to select edit game profile. Once you do this, it's going to open up this specific window for your specific game. What you want to do is set this from auto to multi-core. 
please make sure to do this as it can offer a dramatically better performance depending on your CPU. Threaded Quantum should be left at the default of 45,000. For graphic settings, I would advise just leaving this as it is. If it says true, leave it at true. For controllers, you can set a specific controller as controller 1 to 8, though I'd advise just leaving these at blank and using the already set up and mapped controllers. Once you have this done, click X, we're now done with game profiles. In relation to additional right click options, you can see we have option to different styles like icons, small icons, though to be honest I prefer the list layout as it shows me my game's version, DLC and the amount of time I have spent personally playing it. For now, we're going to close CMU and I'm going to show you how to apply some CPU, GPU and RAM optimizations. For NVIDIA GPU users, you want to right click your desktop and select NVIDIA Control Panel. Once open, select Adjust Image Settings with Preview, then select Use the Advanced 3D Settings, then click Take Me There. Next, you want to come to Program Settings, then you want to click this Add button right here. Once this next list opens, you want to select Wii U Emulator, then at the bottom select Add Selected Program. Next, you want to scroll down your list, then make sure that Threaded Optimization and Triple Buffering are both set to On. In the event that you are using OpenGL with CMU Emulator, this threaded optimization option can boost your performance by between 25 to 40%, so please make sure to have this option enabled. Once you have these two settings changed, click the apply button in the bottom right hand corner. You are now done with your NVIDIA control panel. You can click the X in the top right hand corner. Next up, we're going to apply some power profile settings that can greatly improve CPU performance. Right click the windows icon and select power options. Next, you want to select Advanced Power Settings, and in this area, you want to make sure that you're using the High Performance Power Plan. This is especially useful if you're using a laptop, though you should also make sure that you're plugged into an external power source to make sure that you're achieving the best possible CPU performance and, as a result, emulator performance. Once set to High Performance, you can close these windows. Next, we're going to be searching for Control Panel in our Windows search bar. You want to open Control Panel like so, then you're going to come to System and Security, then from here select System. Now depending on the version of Windows you're using, this may or may not open. All you need to do is make sure you find your Advanced System Settings. This is going to appear on the right on the latest or on the left hand side of the window on older Windows 10 operating systems. You're looking basically for this Performance section. Click Settings, then you want to click Advanced. It is this virtual memory area we are looking for. You can see here that a paging file is an area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it were RAM. I have mine set to 10,000 megabytes. What you want to do is click Change, then disable the automatic management of paging, then you want to select one of your drives, then set a custom page file size of 10,000 megabytes for both initial size and maximum size. Once you have this done, hit the Set button, then you're also going to hit the OK button and make sure that you hit the Apply button. At this point, depending on your operating system, it may prompt you to restart your system. All you want to do is come down to your Windows icon, right click it, then select Restart. Once you have restarted, this page file is going to be correctly assigned, and once finished, you are now ready to load CMU up and start playing some of your favourite games. I'm just going to load up Breath of the Wild to show you some typical behaviour when you load a game for the very first time. Since I enabled the overlays as shown earlier in the guide, you're going to see that I am going to start compiling shaders. This is going to show in the top left hand corner as you play your games. Please be aware that if you encounter any stutter mid gameplay, this is simply due to shaders caching. This is typical behaviour and the more you play your game, the less stutter you're going to have. If like me you want easy access to your CMU version, you can simply get your CMU AXE and drag and drop it onto your taskbar. This gives you easy access to loading CMU and getting into gameplay even faster than before. And with that final step, you have CMU set up on your system with all of the best settings for the best possible performance in your games. As always, if you have any questions on anything shown in this video, don't be afraid to ask them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, if you need additional help, feel free to join my Discord server and ask any questions you have over there. You'll find a link for my Discord down in this video's description. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.